Hello, I'm Mark Pikert, Editor-in-Chief of The Gay Goods, and you are tuned into today's episode of The Gay Goodies with my very special guest and new best friend, August Alexander. I'm very excited to talk to, I'm always excited to talk to these guys. Are you kidding me? One, they're all hot as hell. Two, they're all really charming, often goofballs. Uh, August Alexander is neither charming nor a goofball. Uh, he's relatively serious, so I don't know how this is going to go, but I'm eager to find out. Uh, the very serious August Alexander. Hi, I'm Hello. not a cat. Welcome to the Gay uh, Goodies. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm not a cat. Um, Aren't I'm you excited though? to be here. <laughs> Uh, I'm excited to have you here. And first of all, uh, I love that when we did some lighting checks earlier, you very quickly realized that this was a prime opportunity to wear some merch and donned your yes. noir male tank top. <laughs> you know, I'm my like grinning spirits in a music video promoting perfume, you know? You never know what I'm gonna come out I'm, with, I'm, you know? <laughs> See, that is the that is similar to what I do, which is I just bring brands that I love onto these, and I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm just enjoying my Pepsi. Right? Just hoping, it's like just Oprah's hoping. Favorite, you know, you know, you never know. Yes. And you know what? Oprah Winfrey is the reason why I love cotton t-shirt sheets. She turned me onto those in the late '90s, and I've never looked back. Right? We love Oprah. We do. We we stan Oprah, as the children say. We do. Uh, her recent interview is amazing. It's not, not me. What? We love her. We, <laughs> we love Oprah. <laughs> but you are wearing Noir Mill merchandise because you are currently an ambassador for the company. I am. I am currently their brand ambassador. I just uh, got a box, an influencer kit from them, and all of the things that I had on and head of my hand are from them. Um, I love working with uh, Noir. They give me so much creative control and just let me be a person and kind of like pave my own brand and merge it with their brand. And I really enjoy that uh, for, with studios. Like I've never so what felt mean just like, go ahead. No, 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 you, you're the guest, you continue. <laughs> I've never felt like just a model or just like a dick or hole on set for noir. It's always been like, hey, what are your what are some of your ideas? You know what I mean? So what does being an ambassador entail when you're doing it for a studio? Lots of social media. Um, definitely, I, 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 have to, I have to watch what I say um, a little bit more now, which is very hard for me. Uh, me and a good friend of mine, Wade Wolfgar, have uh, a, we do a show almost well, not every night because we're a mess, but we have a show on our Instagram, uh, and we just we're we're gonna be canceled at some point for it. But um, I'm not used to having a filter, so it's very hard for me to um, ha be like have a brand to support me and like back me as an ambassador, and then just like Ooh, like have my foot in my mouth literally every day. So I'm excited, you know. <laughs> You know, it's always a gamble, you know, we're going to get canceled today. Well, and you recently had to launch a new Instagram because Instagram hates I sex workers. I, I don't, um, I don't understand censorship. And I also, um, am very rebellious and I will try and get away with posting full on pornographic clips on Instagram. And then I wonder why I'm, my account was deleted. You know, it's like, oh my God, my phone was hacked. Yeah. My phone was not hacked. <laughs> That's, that's, they don't like that. They hate it. But they have like some women, you know, on Instagram who will have a whole areola out, you know, and it's just, it's fine. That's fine. Well, I'm okay when women that. do it, it's art. Well, of course, you know, my mom used to tell me if it's in black and white, then it's art. So I tried to, I uploaded like uh, a video in black and white and it was not art, it was banned. So, well, that's outrageous. Exactly. Everyone knows if you put something in black and yeah. white, it makes it art. It instantly becomes art, for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know that. Just look at my content. Uh, well, you know, know. You can't use that. You we can't just, use that. <laughs> we, we just need to educate Instagram. Let's, 
you need to have Instagram on your show with Wayne and you need to sit them down and explain why you're doing what you're doing. I feel like if they're, if, it's kind of like the talk of HIV. It's like, there will always be a stigma and there will always be things, you know, that's like taboo about it or not talked about because nobody wants to have the conversations about it. You know what I mean? It's, yes, and it's so easy to dismiss. It's yeah. so easy to dismiss because at, it's that Nobody thing of, about well, it's just social topics. And it, everyone kind of reduces it to, well, it's just social media. Like, who cares if you're not on Instagram or yeah. if Instagram deletes it? It's just the, the yeah. vanity thing that everyone under the age of 40 is obsessed with. 100%. But it's such a bigger issue of, okay, but what are their rules? They've never... Yeah. made it extremely clear what the rules are and there's no recourse like if you get your account removed it's very difficult to get anyone to respond to you oh oh for sure 100%. but you know what i'm not here i'm not here to talk about instagram i'm here to talk about august alexander yeah what are we talking more, about? more than a dick in a hole you heard shit. it here first <laughs> to start at the very beginning <laughs> Uh, but primarily how, on that. Well, I mean, you do what you're good at. <laughs> you know, fake it till you make it. <laughs> how did you get um, involved? How in did you get involved in porn? Um. Okay, I, I before um, I worked, I did porn. I worked at Starbucks. Um. And I knew from early on years, like childhood and teenage years, like I wanted like a, a job that gave me notoriety or something. Like I always wanted to be MTV famous. That was like my goal. Like I wanted, like I wanted to be in the real world. I wanted, you know, to be verified on Twitter. Like that was the goal. Like MTV was the goal. Doctor Lawyer, not for me. Fuck that. I want to be on MTV. Uh, broke my mom's heart. Uh, and I've always been sexually, you know fluid and just you know okay with sexuality from early age um i don't know it was so like a perfect fit you know like if you can't be famous you know be gay famous you know so you know what's better than that <laughs> i love it i love being a sex worker I, I i enjoy it uh it's liberating for me um for my from my experience being a poc like i'm always going to be you know a you know a bbc or you know what i mean like why not you know monetize on that you know what i mean like if society if that's how society sees sees me as an individual make them pay for it i've always yeah, been why willing not? to i've always been willing to like i don't like call it bad morals whatever but like i've always been willing to do what it takes to get to where i need to be you know what i mean Cutting corners, yeah. you know and what I mean? Sl sleeping with who? 100%. And if people tell you that they're not doing that, they're lying. They're fucking lying. Listen, they're liars. My One of my early dating profile, online dating profiles under the who are you looking to meet, uh, I wrote people who sleep their way to the top only to be undone by tabloid gossip. Love it. That's literally my brand. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Sleeping yeah. my way to the middle, and you know? it, it's it's a very successful brand. Well, if you go all the way to the top, people are going to try to yeah. take you down. But if you sit comfortably in the middle, oh, 100 percent, yeah, right. That's the, like I'm good. Like I, I'm, you know, I'm 30. Uh, I can host. You know, um, I live alone. I don't have a roommate. You know, um, I'm doing all right. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. So. Being able to host, does that make the fan platform work easier where you can just have people come over and shoot for Adjust for Fans or one of the other sites? A hundred, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. But also that was a dig at Grindr Gaze. Um, everyone's, you know, looking for, you know, look, 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 look up, look and hook up, but everybody can't host, you know, everybody's got a roommate. But um, yeah, like being able to have own space is, was always important to me. Um, I grew up very sheltered. And the first thing I wanted to do was like move out, uh, and it's my own, it's my own space. And I created a life for myself. Um, I love sex work for that. Like, you know, I could not imagine working at a desk from nine to five all week. My rent is paid in like 
a shoot. You know what I mean? A shoot and a client, I'm set. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I enjoy this. Like, it's, it's work, and there's days when I don't want to do it, or there's days when it's more challenging than others. But I honestly enjoy what I do. Which do you prefer? Do you prefer having the control of shooting for yourself, or do you prefer showing up to a studio and just having some creative input, but just being there as an employee? I prefer... Um... I prefer the studio work, 100%. I enjoy both, but like, guns ahead, I'm choosing, you know, studio work every time. I just like to show up, do my job, get a paycheck, and leave. I don't like to, I also don't like to wait for money. That just feels very nine to five to me. I don't, I would like my check when I leave, you know? Well, and it's so crazy because five years ago, being a porn star meant you show up to the studio and you do your scene and you meet great people and there's a crew. And now being a porn star means you have to understand social media. You have to be a social media manager. You have to be a video yes. editor. You have to be a graphic designer. You have to be a booking agent. But I love it. I love it. I, I, I love I love that. You have to, it is, it's teaching and instilling, you know, values and work ethic, just like any other job. That's why it, it boggles my mind when people say, sex work isn't going to work. Yeah. Well, then why am I editing 45 minute videos? You know what I mean? Why am I pushing, you know, studios for, to hire me? Why am I, you know, tweeting every hour? You know what I mean? It sounds like a job to me. It sounds like work to me. Anytime I'm not eating when... chicken nuggets and french fries from McDonald's and reading comic books, I am fucking working. <laughs> Uh, someone once said to me, why do you treat life like a to-do list, Mark? What happens when you get everything done? And I said, oh, well, then I get to sit and stare out a window. Right. You know, that's what we're doing. That is what we're doing. When you book people to do fan platform stuff with you, are you looking more for what your fans will respond to? Or are you just looking to create a hot Absolutely scene, not. whatever that means to you? Uh, I... Obviously, I have no control more or less of who I have studio work. So when I went into doing fan content, my goal was to film with people that I wanted to film with. For me, because I know that that sex would be authentic. I know that sex would be great. So that's what I, I lean more towards when I do um, fan videos. Um, and I'm pretty diverse when it comes to my fan content uh, platforms. You know, what was you, what was your first studio scene? What was that like? Ooh. So there's been so many, I'm just trying to think. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I think my first studio <laughs> shoot was, I want to say it was a Black Sun Boys uh, shoot in LA. Um, yeah, it was, it was great. I, I enjoyed it. Um, the for me it was never like oh there's so many people a lot of people have a perception that there's a thousand people on set when you're filming and that's not the case there was like eight and like to me when you when you have a mentality going in that looks like it's going to be such a production there's going to be thousands of people on set and just looking at you when you have that perspective the only way it goes down <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> so like it really helped me you know like get comfortable with that And then you never looked back. I never uh, looked back. Um, yeah, it's this is a taxing job though. Like I mean, like I, I recently um, some some things happened in my personal life, and I had to like reevaluate um, mental health and just like figure out like what 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 I was doing and like how I could better my mental health. And you know, I got through that, and it was great but I had to take some time out for me and figure some stuff out like any other job. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't know if you know, but I, I do live in Las Vegas. Um, currently, I'm, I will be moving to Florida uh, by the end of the year. Um, but I hate Vegas. I don't gamble. Uh, I don't like to lose money. <laughs> Who does? And it's so hot. God, it's so hot here. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. So like, this is literal hell. I mean, um, you're moving from Las Vegas, so yeah. where it's a dry heat, uh, to but Florida? I, it, I've, I, 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 I'd rather, like, I'd rather the sticky, like, sweaty, 
mugginess than just like dry air heat every time. Every time. I'm sick. I'm, I'm a sick. I'm, 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 I'm a masochist, I guess. Whatever. Say this? Well, then you're going, you're going to the right Word. place. If, if you're a masochist, Florida is the place for you. Yeah. Right? You know? Yeah. So, as someone who doesn't like to lose money and as someone who enjoys the notoriety, where, why can I not find your Amazon wish list for your fans to spoil you? I have never, um, I've never made an Amazon wish list. Let me tell you why. Um, I have a nickname for myself and it's Scatterbrain Jane. The thought of like composing anything online or gives anxiety. Like, I don't know how to do an Amazon wish list. I've never, like, I tried it once and like, I was like, fuck this. It's, it's so much work. I don't know how to do it. I'll Google it at some point, I think maybe. But like, I'm a scatterbrain. It's like, oh, if it takes more than four steps, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it. This is why, this is why every yeah. porn star needs an assistant. You need to find some not crazy fan yeah. who's going to do all of this work for you. And then you give him a pair of your socks or your briefs. <laughs> Listen, or a pack of trident layers, you know, like anything really, um, you know, it's a treat, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, a personal I video? I, I just, ooh, yeah. I definitely have items I would put on my list. For sure. Just one. What would you, what would you, what would you put on your list? Um, my rent. Can you put that on Amazon? Can you put that on your wish list? Rent, rent no. payments? No. Um, probably the new Apple um, Mac. I'm okay. So I am the. I love Apple. Like I have literally everything Apple. I am just a glutton for throwing money at the company. <laughs> I am. Uh, the Air Tags just released. I would definitely want those. Um, the new Mac. Obviously, the highest gigabytes. Um, obviously. And I think that's it. I think that's it. Or maybe a new sectional. This is for sure. You know, small all stuff. E easily. You know, yeah. just a couple grand of Apple and then some furniture. Right? But honestly, like, okay, like all that aside, like, I feel like what I really would want is like, like a limited edition uh, X Men comic, like unopened. Like I'm a nerd. I'm a big fucking nerd. I wish I could show you, but like I have like a whole bunch of Rick and Morty Funko Pops. I got comic books. Like I'm a nerd. I'm a fucking nerd. I love it. I mean, all um, of the stuff. This is what. This is why you need a list. Just put it all there. Yeah. You don't have to think about it again. Okay. I'm gonna make a list today. Then I'll make an Amazon wish list today. If anybody would like to buy me things off Amazon, uh, I would appreciate it, and I will also send you a custom video. Um, See, so one of my favorite questions because it's so people don't think about it, but when fans reach out to you, what is the best way for them to get your attention? Because saying like sliding into your DMs with a hey or an emoji with the heart eyes is not cutting it. You get those thousands of times. Okay, a day. so let me let me let me break let me break down engagement. First of all, I re I reply to literally everyone who messages me, except three types of people. Retweet for retweet. Mm -hmm. You don't follow me. I'm not retweeting your your things. Well, I don't know you. Yeah, there's always no. Uh, hey, you're literally holding this conversation hostage. I have nowhere to go from hey. There's nothing. There's nothing here. I can't. So I reply, "Hey," back, and then you say, "Hey" again, and then it's, "How are you doing?" Kill me. No, thank you. I don't want to do this. Um, but I do. Mm -hmm. I do try and engage with everyone. You know, who who messages me. You know, I do. I think that's important. I feel like everybody wants to feel included or part of, or like they have a connection. Uh, it's gotten it's gotten some hot water sometimes because everybody doesn't understand boundaries, you know. So like I've had to like learn to set my own boundaries uh, with people. But I like fan engagement, you know. They're the ones that keep the lights on, and I always remember that, and it keeps me humble. 
What, well, you said three things, but you only listed two. Did I? Oh, and unsolicited nudes. <laughs> because listen, let me be clear. There's nothing worse than sending someone who does porn your terrible nudes. And let's be clear. Unfortunately, I am spoiled. I am used to studio quality nudes and, you know, I'm spoiled. It is what it is. So anything less than that is this trash nudes to me. And it's all we get. And they always look like they're shot on Android. It's so weird. It's like grainy. Do you remember on Grindr how like profile pictures would look like you took your phone and like took a picture of a picture and then like posted it. It has like the glare and stuff on it. Those are all the nudes that I get every time. Every time. And it's like, you want to fuck me? And we'll start to talk. And no, I don't. I, don't, I wish to do neither, sir. They always look to me yeah, like so someone I'm... someone saved them from their from their flip phone in the mid aughts, right? Where they took right. photos of themselves in like two thousand and six, and they're a, just sitting I on just their made Apple a post phone. About that, I just made a post about that. Um, I'm going. I'm going to send you. So I just sent you a picture, and I, I'm going to uh, break down the post. It's the picture of ET. But I posted and I said, you know, random guy, hey, do you want to fuck me? Me, send a picture. That's the type of guys that will do it. That's what they look like all every time. It never fails. Never fails. Like, get some picture quality. You know, the, you know, find your lighting. The same, you know, the same. I don't, and I'm not saying, and I'm not saying, like, take out you know, a cannon of a camera. Like, I understand, you know, like, that is not everybody's availability, sure. But at the same time, it takes two seconds to open the blinds, get some lighting in. You know what I mean? Find an angle. Put on some lotion, some jellies, some, you know, some jams. You know what I mean? I, I'm tired of seeing ashy dicks. Wipe your, wipe your mirror off. Yeah, you have to start, people have to start wiping, wiping mirrors down, for sure. Yeah. What, so, I've... I've never asked a porn star this, but I'm I'm always fascinated by the production photos, the the pre-sex stills that the studios send out, where oh, you best. are standing Shit, with sorry. erections and smiles. What is it like filming those? Like, is that is that awkward? Just standing there with a boner and letting people take your photo? N not to me. Um, I've always, like I said, am I upside down? <laughs> No, but I can't see you. I'm sorry, I'm having really, I'm totally having a stroke. Um, is that fine? Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, um, I have no problem saying I use Trimex. Um, so I, I don't know. It's, that's not weird to me. Like that's, I feel like that's what you're there for. Like I've never felt awkward or weird about being naked or being photographed, like being photographed or being filmed. For me, I have my own, like everyone has their own insecurities and their own, you know, vice, their own things that go to their mind. You know what I mean? Like, um, I don't work out. Um, I don't know. I've never worked out a day in my life. Exactly. Like consistently. So like, I'm always thinking like, oof, like should I've eaten, you know, you know, two large fries last night before the shoot. You know what I mean? And you're also like, you think I like this, this industry is like so hypercritical on image and body. So you're always going to be conditioned to think like, you're not like, you could be better. You could be better. You can be better. And when you're in that takes a toll on you after a while, you know, like I'll, I stop eating breads and I hate yeah. everyone, but this is something that I want to do. And, you know, you have to, you know, you have to work at it like the other job. After you film a bottoming scene, what is the first thing that you go out and eat? I only top. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Dom top sixty four. Um, <laughs> my my. Um, no judgment. Okay, but my my go to meal after I um bottom is a forty piece chicken nugget from McDonald's, two large fries, two apple pies, uh, and a large. You ready? Diet Coke. Well, the Diet Coke is what tips the balance to health. For sure. I'll, every time, you know. <laughs> I mean, no. you 
your goal should be to become a big enough star that that is just in your writer when you show up to set. They have that ready as soon as you're done. Listen, that is the ultimate goal. Like, I would like that. And I would like nothing than that, if we're being honest. You know, let's, do, let's get that in a contract, please. Quickly. Um, All right. We, yeah. we are running out of time. So the final segment oh, no. of the Gay Goodies. Uh-oh. Okay. What? Who did you used to jerk off to when you were growing up? What celebrities? Well, we're playing that. Um, oh, no. It's crazy because I never thought that I'd know them or interact with them. So, like, now, like, I do. So, like, it's that, that part is the trippiest. Like, jacking off to people and then, like, getting to know them as people, like, that was insane. Um, um, obviously, Rocco Steele. Um, who else? Adam Russo. Um, Any for sure. film or TV people? Or just porn? Just straight up porn? Film, film or TV. Uh, I knew, listen, I knew uh, uh, that I was a ninny. Uh, Tom, Tom, what? Smallville? Yep. Do you remember Smallville? Yes, I do. Right? Uh, for sure, Tom Welling. Uh, the guy from Prison Break. Uh, for sure. Wentworth Miller. Huh, I really have a type. Um, sure, yeah. He's <laughs> bi. No, Wentworth is gay, gay? I think. Whatever. Uh, is he gay? Well, you know, you know, like so. you know, like people in the industry like will always like dip the toe first. I'm like, I'm bisexual, and then I was like, okay, nobody cares. Cool, cool, cool. So I'm gay. <laughs> we know, <laughs> but yeah, uh, those two. Okay, and I also like. Okay, I like trash, like tr douchebag, trash, like this, trash guys. So like Colin Farrell types. Ugh, love it. Love mm -hmm. it. Like you look like you don't own deodorant uh, and you're running low on toothpaste. Sign me up. <laughs> I up. at one point in my life, look. at one point in my life, I had the entire transcript from his sex tape memorized, and a friend so of bad. mine and I used to perform it at parties. <laughs> oh my god, you're my new. You're listen. You're my soulmate. I love that. Um, it was a really bad sex tape. <laughs> it was a really bad sex tape. I mean. He he was a very pro vagina though. He really wanted her to know that her vagina is a pretty fucking flower, and that's yeah, lovely. Like he, yeah, that's you know, yeah. You can never say he's a misogynist, you know. Listen, no. And when she kept getting pubes in her teeth, and she he just he made a joke about about it and offered <laughs> to shave them all off for her. Yeah, I mean, what a gentleman, really, you know. Ruin her life, but a gentleman, nonetheless. <laughs> ah. So yeah, you know, balance, really. Excellent choices all around. Uh, August Alexander, thank you. thank you so much for joining me today. I, once again, feel like I've yeah, made a new best friend. Me. Yay. Uh, um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in. And August Alexander, uh, where else can people follow you? People can follow me on Twitter. Uh, if you guys go to the link, Twitter. Uh, I'm on OnlyFans. I am on Instagram. Um, during the pandemic, I unfortunately am not escorting right now, so I'm not on rent. I'm not seeing any new clients. But you can find me on all social media platforms. Uh, and say hello and subscribe to my stuff and watch me fuck. I'm not fat. And don't send him unsolicited nudes unless he requests them. Yeah. And sometimes I request them. You know, people are hot. Yeah. You know? And that's it. Still I waiting on Tom Wellings. On. Right? I mean, you know, it's fine. You know? Uh, maybe one day, you know? Uh, August Alexander, thank you. Thank all of you for tuning in and tune in next thank week for, for a new episode of The Gay Goodies. Oh, uh, who's next week? Spoilers? Any spoilers? It's a surprise! Bye. <laughs> <laughs>